Okay, so today we're gonna try to uh try to cover the chapter. I'm gonna try to cover the chapter thirteen, cause the uh, chapter thirteen is as you know is a kind of a summary of the what we have learned so far, especially for the what is called the instant level kind of exploration. Cause we until so far we actually learn about the more like a case based. The kind of approaches because uh, we actually set up like a Johnny Johnny or some some old guy I didn't I didn't remember that name <laughs> his name but we just uh, try to pre focusing on the about the case based kind of a prediction like uh, based on the our uh, model and then yeah Henry yes thank you <laughs> Ricardo yeah Henry and Johnny as a case right so we based on the, those kind of case cases, we actually testing and then we actually try to validate our prediction model, which is the more like a case based kind of a prediction, right? So number so chapter thirteen is about the base, just kind of a brief summary about the how based on the these all of the, these technique we have covered, we have learned so far, and then uh, when or what conditions, what data condition we have. Under the, what they, those kind of data conditions, we actually try to use the which model technique. So that's the thing, that's the main focus of the, this chapter. So as you can see here, maybe maybe when you're looking at the number 13, uh, like a, this kind of a 13.1, uh, we these are the kind of uh, our visualization kind of plot we actually cover and then uh, we actually try to Breakdown plot also allows us to the what kind of a variable is a very significant to predicting the survival, the probability of the survival for Henry and Johnny. Like like uh in this case, like uh, for example, in the breakdown plot, age and class and some and fair and gender, these four. Let me these four variable is the very, very important kind of plot. And then uh but depending on the what kind of uh, uh techniques we're gonna use, sometimes we actually have uh some of the like a, some our our interpretation of the result is the quite very right. So for example, in here, like uh, in case of the Johnny D, actually have a uh, age and gender and class and fair, as you can see in the breakdown plot, these four variables is the one of the key variable. That allows us to the probability of the survival for the dead little children, and also depending on the what kind of variable we're gonna use, maybe sometimes only gender or class or age or gender in this case, like a line or a sharply plot, has that these only these two gonna be the very important variable for the prediction of the survival. Maybe in case of the line, maybe age gonna be also gonna be affect uh, very significant. But anyway, so these kind of things is allows us to the depending on the what kind of techniques we, uh, we use, those each model gonna be providing the some of the slightly different result. So our question now is the okay under the our data set or our data condition or our research question or number of variable, what kind of a model is gonna be more effective to put to develop the prediction model. So so that's the thing we have to uh cover in the 13.2 because in here it actually says about the number of one of the most important criteria for the exploration explain explanation method is the depending on the number of explanatory variable. So that means for the predictive prediction of the outcome variable, how many how many explanatory variable we're gonna include it or specify in the model is the very very key criteria to to determine the which model technique we're gonna use. So in here actually, uh, this book actually providing the three different kind of a scenario. First one is the low and medium number of explanatory variable, which means like uh, we only have a very, we only have a, not too many kind of a variable 
to predict for, for prediction, like a 10 or 20, or maybe less than 10 sometimes. In that case, the most appropriate method for in that case is the CP profile plot gonna be the more useful because the CP profile profile technique gonna be allows us to the try to uh try to develop the sum of the plot between the between the variable like a two variable or three variable at most you know so these kind of a two two between the two variable or three variable kind of a relationship gonna be allows us to the under more deeper understanding about the what's the also what's the key variable for the prediction of the model in case of the okay second scenario is the how what if we have a medium to large number of explanatory variable like a 100 or more than 100 kind of explanatory variable in that case is cp profile is not feasible in this case because we cannot we cannot draw all, all the those kind of uh, associations as a plot for the that 100 more than 100 kind of explanatory variable so in that case is what we can do is uh, maybe we can actually do about the use the BD B, uh, breakdown plot like uh, we just kind of uh, as you can see in the previous pages we just keep keep drawing the set of the whole variable and then uh, try to uh like this try to estimate about the what's the prediction rate and the importance of the, those variables etc like a pair leading the payment and then at the bottom maybe prediction ratio in total gonna be show up or maybe we can also think about using the sharply value plot it's also pretty the same for the bd plot or maybe another thing we can do is maybe even if we can use the all of the those 100 or more than 100 variable to the model, maybe some of the bear, that does not always mean that the all, all those it all those these variables are very significant or has the very good magnitude of the prediction power. So in that case, we only we only just kind of focusing on about the variable, the variable that has a very significant uh a significant or important to prediction outcome. So that is also another way we can do. So that means like a limited plot only to the variable with the largest in impact. So we can just try to sorting the those kind of a variable prediction power changes. And then we only focusing on the those plot, and then we just move to the CP profile or sometimes BD plot to 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 get the more in depth understanding of those relationships. And then a third scenario is the what if we have a very very extreme large number of the exploratory variable, like uh, for example, like uh, if we have a kind of a, a prediction model about the as that us estimate about the insurance pricing, depending on more than maybe 200 or 300, or sometimes maybe close to the thousand kind of a different variable okay. of the car and persons, or that person's demographic profile or social demographic profile, et cetera. In that case, we have a two extremely large number of the external variables that it is extremely hard to handle to handle all of them to understand the, all of the those prediction related predictive powers uh, that affects to the model prediction. So in that case, is most common method gonna be the line method because the line method is the more like a focusing on on the useful for the when we have a very large number of the explanatory variable. And then it also gonna be works very well about the based on the those kind of large number variable. What kind of a those basic overall trend or pattern can uh, we can identify among the those uh, extreme right among the those extreme large number of variables itself themselves? So that's the kind of a, a one one criteria when we try to choose the appropriate method for the model depending on the number of explanatory variable. 
And also another criteria we can also think about is the what if we have a correlated explanatory variables? That means like, for example, if we have a, in, in case of the Titanic data, maybe travel class and ticket, ticket fare gonna be the highly correlated because yeah. maybe if we have a first class, ticket fare gonna be very high. And then a third class gonna be ticket fare gonna be very low. That means those two has the very highly correlated to one another. In that case is we, what we can do is maybe we can creating the another variable, like a derived variable, uh, extract uh, extract from the, those two relationships. Or maybe if we can think about the, what is called the principal component analysis. Because uh, one of the basic objective of the principal component analysis is the kind of a reduced dimension, which means the reduced variable. Because even if we have a 100 or 200 variable, based on the, their correlation, uh, correlations, we can try to uh, try to figure out the, what kind of the principal components that reflects the most maximum variation between the those two those two or more than two kind of a variable. And then instead of the using the multiple variable in the model, we can just only using the that one principal components that reflects the maximum variation of the among the all the other several variables. So those can be also possible. And then if we can succeed in, in to reducing the our number of variable in this case, we can only using the those PCA uh, principal components. And then uh, maybe we can have, we can try to looking at the BD plot or sharply profile or CP profile to for the in-depth understanding of the explanatory variable in terms of the predictions. And also 13.4 is the another criteria for the what is about the model with the interactions. So when we have an interaction is have an interactions, what we can do is we can also think about the visualizing those interactions by using the interaction breakdown breakdown plus or maybe CP profile to see the depending on the one variable, what the other variable is gonna be changed over time. Maybe sometimes uh maybe if if because uh, because the interaction is actually three different cases. One is the continuous multiplied by continuous, and then category by continuous, and then category and category. Actually, these two is the quite easy because the depending on the one category. Maybe we can try to develop the what is the interaction changing to the continuous variable or category. Like uh, this one gonna be the more like a stepwise kind of things. And then a uh, second one gonna be the more like uh, depending on the category, maybe this kind of a different slope, uh, slope gonna be to a while. What is the most compli complicated one gonna be the this continuous kind of things, which is quite rare that you can see in the model. But this one is also maybe possible. But in that case, this maybe CP profile or IB, IBD plot in action plot gonna be also useful to, to see, to consider the, these kind of uh, interactions. And also another thing is the, what is what about the sparse explanations? Sparse explanation is uh, kind of like, a, uh, one thing we can do is the line kind of a method. Cause uh, is this one is only, cause uh, this one is actually because of the, even if we have a uh, many variable specify in the model, we only try to looking at the kind of a very limited kind of a number of a variable, which is the more like a sparse explanations. In that case is maybe we can try to develop the line kind of a plot and then approaches that actually allows us about the in-depth understanding about the context or overall or overall trend of the of the explanatory variable outcome a variable in uh, uh, corresponding to the our prediction outcome okay so 
that's another thing we can also think about. And then uh, the, in these cases, maybe line gonna be the most useful and appropriate method that we can choose, okay? So any questions so far, anything? Any questions? I would say, get to the, I would try to avoid line as much as possible, really. I would try to reduce mm -hmm. the number of variables using CPI, mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. It has a, it has yeah. a possibility. It has a, a model that we are training. It has a model that is already mm -hmm. exists, and it was trained that way. And we are making reverse engineering. Yeah, maybe just we have line. Because it have mm -hmm. even though they recommend a line, yeah, it have a warning. So it's like you will never be sure about the interpretation mm -hmm. of that response. Yeah, right. Understand. Yeah. Well, and also maybe maybe sometimes depending on the, our data availability, maybe sometimes like uh, when we looking at the, the Titanic data. In case of the Titanic data has the quite few, quite low number of the variable that it that explain to the prediction of the survival of the passengers, right? So in that cases, rather than try to think about the advanced kind of model, we just only focusing about the relationship between the more try to in-depth understanding about the each explanatory variable and then how those explanatory variables gonna be affected to the prediction of the survival, that might be possible. Or sometimes, even if we have a, a lot of variable, which is my my case when I look when I conducting the one projects about the uh allows uh, that uh, that allows to the estimating about the probability of the disability, people with the disability choosing the some specific uh specific assistant assistant technique or items in that data actually have uh, more than more than more than 2000 variable in the in the database so in that in that database first thing we have to do is we actually try to delete the most uh, delete the redundant variable and then after that what i can do is, is the i can try to figure out the some of the correlations among the exploratory variable and then I make it reduce the reduce the variable dimensions, which means I'm gonna I use the actually principal component analysis to reduce the as as few uh exploratory variables as possible and then I try to think about the other more more in uh tech modeling technique that allows us to the, a little bit more in-depth understanding among the variable to uh, impact of the variable on the predictions. So that's the my actually, usually I usually do in the, doing the approaches rather than using the line or those kind of technique, just kind of a, with the, with the, all of the variable uh, included in the model as it is. Maybe sometimes that actually allows us to the, uh, try to get the more fit more fitted kind of a prediction outcome but that is uh, extremely hard to handle so there might be the some I think that there might be something about the trade-off between the maximizing the uh, oh, goodness uh, maximizing the prediction power by including the all of the all of uh, by including by cons considering all variation of the older variable or Maybe reducing the reducing the number of variable by using the principal component analysis, etc., and then uh, focusing on about uh, some of the very few few variable with the largest impact of the prediction power. So there is always kind of a trade off between the those two, and then uh, that actually depends in, depending on about the, your research question or your availability of the time and 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 some of the funding or financial constraints gonna be another factor you can also thinking about when you try to conduct in the projects, okay? Any questions, anything? 
Uh, Kiantu, uh, yeah. While, while, while you were uh, talking, I was thinking about the the author suggesting of using PCA, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the very large variables for dimensionality reduction. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. things that uh, we must understand when using PCA is that you're going to transform the original variables into principal components, right? Uh, so talking about explainability, uh, you know, uh, you can, you can, you are, we are going to work with the principal components, which has each one has a loading, a loading for each of the original, you know, variables there. Yeah, right. But, yeah. but it's not that uh, straightforward to, mm. you know, get yeah, the physical component analysis uh, explanation to the original variable explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So again, you know, maybe for the, you know, for the uh, computing efficiency for, you know, for, uh, you know, get, getting the model uh, to work with uh, less, you know, less uh, dimension is good. But then mm -hmm. we are, we, we are back again, you know, to the problem that, okay, how is my original variable affecting the prediction? Okay. Mm. No matter yeah. if it's numeric or, or, yeah, or right. categorical. Uh, so that 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 presents its, its own challenges. <laughs> yeah, I think right. I think you run a risk with PCA, right? Where right. you may be lucky mm -hmm. in that the 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 loadings for the you know similar variables are can be interpreted, right? It just makes sense. Like, okay, this is mm -hmm. Right. Like if you were you were predicting, um, I don't know the price of uh, apartments, right? It's 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 related to the size, like all the mm -hmm. the uh, the loadings, you know. But there, of course, you could you could be unlucky there as well. And um... yeah, for, for for example, I'm thinking about uh, uh, you know problems in biology, where you have uh, you know uh, lots of genes around, you know, which each one could be a variable. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't know exactly you know how they interact, okay? So yeah, uh, yeah the, the PCA yeah. Will, will be will be an interesting you know uh, challenge in terms of the explainability. In terms of mm -hmm. the you know uh, is is in uh, your computer you know you, you're computing a load, then you know it, it makes sense. But mm -hmm. you know relating that PCA to the original uh, variable is not that easy. I think... yeah because uh, yeah. I understand that because uh, yeah. <laughs> in case of the PCA, actually, right. uh, maybe like like you said, in in case of the medicine, like uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, medicine field, maybe in this case, maybe PCA might not be possible or feasible way to analyzing mm -hmm. the med medical data because maybe as you can say maybe all genes or those things has that their own law and then. Uh, we actually right. fully did not explore the exactly what they do. So in that cases, we just leave it as they are. And mm -hmm. then uh, using all of the those information into the model gonna be the best one. And then uh, this one that actually allows us to the considering as as uh, maximizing the as many variation as possible in the model. Mm -hmm. But in case of the social science. Right. Yeah, in that case, compared to the medicine, social science is a more like a statistically loose kind of condition. In that case, is, mm -hmm. uh, social science is more like a understanding about the overall kind of a trend okay. or pattern, focusing on the these things. In that case, mm -hmm. is, we usually thinking about the rather than the keeping the all of the variable, maybe if we can keep the all the variable, it is still okay to run the model. We also uh, try to keep the all the variable in that case, but sometimes there is a lot of a redundancy kind of a question, cause uh, mm -hmm. for example, like uh, even if we can try to do the census, census survey data, when you're looking at the, those census data, sometimes you can find that the, some of the question is uh, quite, quite repeatedly asked, asked right. to the uh, respondent to yeah, make that, sure that about the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so in that case, is, there is a, in most of the survey data in the social science sometimes have a, a lot of a redundancy for the, to 
to make to ensure the cross um, validity of the that survey data. In that cases, we can also think we can thinking about the reducing the variable, try to try to removing the those duplicates, and then then in that case is PCA gonna be comes in. But even if we can using the PCA analysis in that cases in the social sciences. What we can do is the PCA also providing about the sensitivity analysis. Mm -hmm. So those actually allows us about the, even if we can use the PC as a, as a reduced kind of a variable, we can also try to testing the, these kind of a sensitivity compared to the original low variable, how PC gonna be uh, success significantly sensitive to the changing of the it changing of the PC or changing of the this low variable, depending on the sum of the set of the scenario, like the like adjusting the whole different kind of a PCs the parameter changes, and then uh, we can also testing the sensitivity of the model to the robust to improve the robustness or testing the good uh, a goodness of fit of the model in this case. So, but in in case of the medicine, maybe I think that keeping all the variables gonna be the best way we can do because uh, every variable gonna be very very affect affected related to the to the life kind of a situation. So, yeah, that's my thought on this. So, and I would like to point on, yeah to point that was what I was thinking about using PCA was like make the PCA process as part of the model process. So I will create my own predict function who takes the original variables, perform the PCA, or at least based on the loadings, a feasible loading PCA, like or I have the loadings and I will apply to new data. It's, it's like that. So mm. and after transforming, apply the model. So I will have the interpretation from the original data uh, uh, even though using the PCA values, right? That yeah, would that, be that, that, my that, 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 that could be a, 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 a way to do it. Uh, of course, you know, it, it depends on how many, you know, what is the dimension of your, of your, yeah. uh, of your for data frame. You know, if it's yeah. large, uh, go, going individual, you know, will be will be very, very cumbersome. Yeah. Yes, and also in the data science or machine learning technique, we 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 still have a lot of a, a lot of a techniques we can testing about the sensitivity of the that prediction powers or something like a AUC or ROC or sometimes BIC, mm -hmm. like a like a testing criteria. So using the these things, maybe we can try to keep testing about keep tracking all our prediction power even if we can using the this pca analysis pca analysis technique to reduce the variable or reduce the dimension so that's the thing that we can do but in here in this book actually more like a recommending to the keeping all the assuming that the, we can keep the older variable in the model and then depending on the number of variable what kind of a model technique gonna be the best under the those kind of conditions, or what about the modeling with the interactions or sparse explanation, etc. These all of the these things actually based on the assumption that the uh, we gonna be keep all the variable as they are sometimes uh, as as uh, if possible, and then uh, how we can deal with this. That's the kind of a key seems like a key focus of the in this kind of techniques. So. Anyway, and then 13.6 is the kind of a mention about the additional uses of the model exploration and explanation, which is the quite basic one, because uh, all of the, these techniques is also very useful to the prediction, to have the predict, predict, predict of the probability of the maybe survival in the Titanic cases or maybe predict of the housing price prices or insurance pricing, but Sometimes these kind of model also help us to the another kind of a purposes, which is one of the purposes they can do is the pro model improvement of the debugger. That means we try to do 
and as we see in the in here, we try to do all of the, these things, and then uh, testing their power, their prediction power, that actually allows us to the model improvement based on the to keep comparing to the these kind of a model to one another. And then another thing is the additional domain st uh, specific validation. So sometimes some model gonna be give us to the very limited insight about the, our model, but the other approach is gonna be give us the additional insight. In that cases, we can try to integrate it, those kind of findings and then try to explain what's going on in terms of the basic mechanism of the prediction power. And also third one is the model selection. So based on the their validity or reliability of the prediction result, we can also choose the which one gonna be the best, best explanatory power or prediction power. And then uh, we can choose that model and then interpret that, interpret that modeling result. And also new knowledge extraction is another thing because by integrating or comparing all of the, those model and then I try to testing or conducting the as many model as possible. We can also think about the unexpected knowledge valid extraction going to be comes up. And then the next one is uh, based on the, these kind of uh, purposes. Next one is the kind of uh, how we can try to compare those kind of models. Because uh, maybe what we can do in the compare this model is uh, how we can do is the champion and challenger kind of analysis. So whenever we learn the model or keep iterating to the model by using the, by adjusting the, all of the different variable settings or different kind of a parameter gonna be used, there might be the sum of the champion, which is the, what is the best appropriate model. And then uh, whenever we keep iterating the modeling process or modeling optimization, we can also finding the sum of the challengers that compete against to the champion, champion model, which is the, the best model. And then whenever we keep competing or comparing those things all together until we get we get to the point to the okay, now we have a best prediction model we can we found from our data set. That's the kind of thing. And then uh that is also kind of a reason why we, whenever we testing the, all of the, these different kind of uh, techniques, and then every time we're gonna testing, test, conducting the, this model and then competing the, this model to the one another, and then we can pick up the, what is the best model we can choose? Maybe do we have to do the random forest or a single vector model, more like a classification based kind of approach is gonna be more appropriate or we only focusing on about the more like a continuous probability of the regression model based on approaches actually like uh, versus this part and this part. This is more like a tree and classification like a stepwise discrete kind of approach is gonna be more appropriate or maybe second option gonna be the continuous uh, predict, uh, prediction of the continuous probability of the survival in this case or maybe outcome gonna be more our focus of the question. It is actually, it these kind of things actually determined by the what kind of question or what kind of research context we have. And then depending on that, and then whenever we choose the one of the two, and then uh, we can actually try to compare to the in uh, these two models within the that same category, and then more in depth, and then uh, try to testing those things based on the this same setting, or maybe adjusting or uh, combining, uh, testing the different combination of the this explanatory variable until we get to the point of the maximum prediction outcome, okay? So 
So I think that that's the kind of uh, end of the, this chapter because uh, this actually this plot like a thirteen point four also shows us about the what is the prediction power gonna be the different is different between the between the this kind of a four different model maybe it based maybe in this example maybe for the in case of the Johnny D like a little child kind of uh, Titanic data maybe. It's, both plot gonna be show us about the pretty support vector machine does not significantly show about the variation of the prediction of the survival. Maybe logistic regression, this case, gonna be the much quite highest kind of things, but it is still depending on about the what kind of a variable we're gonna focus in. And then in case of the general boost regression and random forest, they seem to be have a pretty same same pattern of the noises like this. But the thing is, uh, random forest is a little bit more less in effect on the prediction power compared to the generalized boost regression. Because generalized boost regression actually reflects the more variations depending on the age and fares. So, so it depends on Okay, it depends on your your research question and then what focusing on the exploratory variable you're gonna look at. Those things actually determines about the which which model gonna be the most appropriate for your your research purposes or your predictions. Okay, so that's the end of the chapter thirteen. And then, any question? I don't know. Really okay. good. Very insightful. Okay. So, okay, let me type.